The following opinions are solely those of Boatest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for Boatest.com, and today we're going to discuss a topic that affects all boaters, and that is weather and how it gets into your hands. The best way to get it into my hands is with SXM Marine Weather delivered by satellite to my boat. It works for me, but does it work for you? Let's take a look, and to do that, we'll be in a more controlled environment here at my desk instead of on a boat. Now, the information will come to you from a multifunction display that's typically going to be on the panel on your boat. You pull up the menu, activate the serious weather, and now you can go to the specific features of the weather application. I hit weather, and now I've got view and icons. Those are the two most important features on this menu screen. Let's start with the view and see what we can pull up. Probably the most popular will be precipitation, and when I activate the precipitation, automatically comes up on screen. Here I can see where the different areas of rain are. Got a nice storm cell going off of Maine. Here's another one off of Nova Scotia. Another important factor, sea surface temperature. Now I've got a color bar going on of different sea surface temperatures, and then where those temperatures lie on a scale over on the left-hand side. More importantly, when I get out of the menu and I start zooming in, I can get really specific about where these different areas of sea temperature occur and the boundaries of those temperatures. Come out of that, I can also get text on sea surface temperature, but that gets a little cluttered. It's showing me just what the exact temperatures are, and I don't care what those numbers are. I want to see trends. Color shows that much better. So the text is not anything really big to me. Waves. Now this shows me color, which I can change, plus height, period, and direction. For wind, this will bring up wind barbs, and there are two sizes to those barbs, a short and a long. The short is 5 miles an hour, the long component is 10 miles an hour. Add them together, there's 15, and I can also get the direction that the wind is blowing from. Come out of that, and I get surface features. And when you go to surface features, you want to be more zoomed out. Because this is now showing isobars and where those isobars are going. And you can also see the fronts. Here's warm front, cold fronts. That gives you a better trend of what the weather is going to be doing. Now, let's get back to the main menu and go to icons. This is neat. City forecasts are a broad scale five day forecast of what conditions will be like. Lightning gives you the exact latitude and longitude of where a lightning strike has occurred within about the last 10 minutes. And here I can see them all scattered throughout the south, the Gulf area, the Great Lakes. Observations brings up buoy data. I can click on an individual buoy and then bring up the data for that buoy and then click on that data to get an even more detailed view of what that's showing. Storm tracks, now this is neat. This is for your larger storms. Think of your named storms. Here we have a storm moving right up into the Gulf of Mexico and on through. And if I touch any of these little areas, I get Tropical Storm Alberto. May 27th, gust to 69 knots. If I go back to where it was coming from, the gusts were up to 52 knots. And if I project ahead, going to 46 knots. So we do get a trend of what's going on. And any of these that I bring up, I can touch and get more specific information on it. Storm attributes not only gives me a look at the cells, but the direction they're traveling in. And if I touch on one of them, a box will pop up. I touch that, and I can get a much more enhanced version, even including the observation time, the cloud heights, the direction the storm is moving, and the maximum radar return. These little red shaded areas become places that you want to watch where storms are taking place. You don't want to leave that on all the time because it does, does make for a cluttered screen, but it is a good feature to go to every now and then so you can see what that storm is doing. Watch boxes. If I zoom in on one of these watch boxes and hit the little triangle, it tells me there's a thunderstorm there and I can get details on what that thunderstorm is doing. Now, as far as your local area, that's the marine zone feature, and this is really important. Let's zoom in to where we are here on our screen, coming up on Cape Cod, okay? So now, this is where we are. If I hit marine zones and show the zones, these are all different areas of where the weather is gonna take place, and I can select each individual piece for where I want my weather to be. Here I'm going to select right at my home base, 
on the south side of Cape Cod. Now, this is important because if you go to your uh, VHF radio and you hit the weather button on that, you're going to get Mechanical Mike giving you the rundown of weather for a huge area. And you may have to wait 20 minutes before it gets to your area. And then what happens when it gets to your area? Somebody has talked to you, there's other things going on, and suddenly you're distracted, you miss it, and now you've got to wait another 20 minutes for it to cycle back around and get to you again. This eliminates that. I can dial in specifically to the weather zone I want and get the information for that area only. That's a great feature. Thank you, Sirius, for that. So now if I go back to the menu and hit the read icon, there's my display of exactly what the weather is going to be. Tropical statements is more of a broad spectrum uh, forecast um, on what's going on with the weather in like the, so here we have the Atlantic, the Eastern Pacific. Eh, it gets a big picture thing if you want to follow a hurricane that's coming up the coast, but for local weather, I don't really use that. But if you were sailing perhaps across the ocean, traveling internationally, then you would. Adjust is a neat feature because now you can change the scale of the colors for what you're using and the range of temperature for both the sea surface, things like that, wave heights. And that's an important feature for me because when I'm fishing, sea surface temperature is critical. I want to know where the colder water is, where the warmer water is, because fish gravitate to the specific temperatures of water. So I don't want to know from zero degrees to 100 degrees. I want to know from 50 degrees to 65 degrees. That's more important to me, and I can adjust that right here. And I can also adjust the wave heights. It's going to show me the maximum wave height, the minimum wave height with whatever I want. I'm not going to be out in 50 foot waves. I want to know where the zero to five foot waves are. Come back out and now I've got animate and this is a neat feature because most of the views that you will be looking at can be animated. Now to illustrate the animation, let's look at something like precipitation. We'll turn that on and here's precipitation going on uh, at the northern coast of Maine. If I go back and hit the animation feature, Go to the time period and look back for the last three hours. Keep the speed on high. Now I'm seeing a little video going on of the last three hours of where this precipitation was. Now if I go back, come out of the precipitation and look at something like the wind. And now I go to animation. Now I can go ahead of time. This gives us more of a prediction rather than what we're seeing now or in the past. So let's look at the next nine hours of what the wind is going to do in this area. It stays pretty much the same. Now we go up ahead two days. Now we can see the wind is increasing and it's changing direction. You don't want to leave this on because it eats up processing power in your multifunction display and can slow down the functionality. You also don't want to look at the screen and mistake what might be forecast for tomorrow as what is happening right now. But to view what you want in a short period of time, hit that animate feature as you go to your different views and you get some really interesting looks at what the forecasts are doing or the history, like precipitation. It won't show forecast, it'll show the history. Where's that precipitation been and how is it moving? You can pretty much get an idea of where it's gonna be heading after that. I can also determine the speed of that animation, whether it's gonna be low, medium, high, or adjust it manually. I always put it on high so that I can see in a shorter period of time what that weather's doing. I want to see the movement. I don't want to see little, 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 little pieces. I want to see it going somewhere. Back out, and then we have transparency, and this just gives you a view of how the transparency is going to look. Can you see through the screen, or is it going to block the entire screen? I want it about halfway so that I can see what is going on while still looking at the chart. So now, how do I use this system to help keep me safe on the water? Well, precipitation is first. I'm going to go to that button first and show where the rain is, where it's trending, where it's going to. Lightning is next. That's a bad one. I want to know where the lightning is, and I want to work my way around that. Then I'll go with the storm tracks. I want to see where the storm's headed, where they're coming from, and I'm going to use all of that information together to help me navigate around the storms, through the storms, and get me home safe. Now let's talk about timing. Human hands have to touch this so it's not instantaneous. It's not coming from a satellite and boom, directly onto your screen. With human hands touching it, they clean it up and then they make it readable for you. But the more critical the information is, the quicker it comes to you. Lightning comes every two minutes. Precipitation, it's radar based, so it's every four to five minutes. Now something like sea surface temperature, you don't need to know that by the minute. That comes from infrared satellites and it's every three hours. Wind is every 20 minutes. So it's a great trade-off and you still get critical information. Now 
We started this by saying, is it for everybody? And the answer to that is no, it's not. The guy on the lake on his pontoon boat doesn't care about satellite weather. He's going to be minutes away from his dock and relative safety. But the guy who's going offshore is going to be interested in this. Now, yes, I have apps on my phone and I can get updated and things like that. But you have to update it before you leave. And when you're offshore, do you really want to be stopping what you're doing and breaking out your phone? No, I do not. I want to be looking at the screen that's right in front of me and have the weather overlaid on it. So again, if you're over six miles offshore, that's the guy that's going to be looking for this information, and it's great to have. And let's not forget that since we're subscribing to the satellite weather, we might as well subscribe to the satellite radio as well because we can also control that from our screen right here and pick any channels we want, have them all come right up for us. So that's my look at Sirius XM Marine Weather. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you safely on the water.